happening in all of us, right? The spirit was in Jesus. That spirit taught him about who he was and who God was, where he came from, the, what the father's thoughts and intentions were of him, what the father intended to do with his life, taught him all those things. And so he grew in the wisdom of God. And then that caused him to grow in the stature of his sonship in this earth. Right. Okay. Now, when Jesus ascended to the right hand of, 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 of God, the same spirit that dwelled in Jesus can now dwell in every single person that will believe on Jesus. The same spirit. So it says Jesus had the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in him bodily. Guess what? You have the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in you bodily. So do you. So do all of you. So do you. We have the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in us bodily. The spirit has been poured out without measure, it says. So Jesus had the spirit without measure. He was sealed with it. Now we have that same spirit in us. And that same spirit is doing the same thing in us than it did in Jesus. It's causing us to grow in our wisdom or our understanding of God and who God is as Father and who we are as His children and what it means that we come from Him and what, what kind of life that we have from Him. And as we grow in that understanding, we also grow in the stature of our sonship, the stature of our daughterhood, just like Jesus did. And we'll find that same spirit that dwelled in Jesus, bringing forth peace and love and kindness and all those things in Him, also doing that in us. Yeah, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. It wasn't that Jesus had some ability that we don't have. Mm -hmm. He didn't have like some superhuman strength and that superhuman strength was the strength by which he used to do these things. It was the spirit of God dwelling in him that brought about everything in him that happened. We have that same spirit of God dwelling in us, and it can bring about all of the same things in us that it did in Jesus. Wow. Even unto this mortal body, should it pass away before the Lord comes back, that spirit will raise this mortal body back up under glory and immortality. Okay? And so I think that's what Thomas is trying to convey. And I really appreciate the way he said it because I think that sometimes you got to say things in a radical way to oh, yeah. make people stop. And just look at and this is a radical statement. The church has been busy worshiping Jesus the man for 2,000 years. They've been busy worshiping a historical figure, right? Oh. Right? right? Well, what, what, what did Jesus say every time somebody tried to worship him? He shut the thing down. He said, there's one who is good. Yeah. Who, who are you calling good? There's one who is good, <laughs> right? And so Jesus himself didn't allow people to worship Jesus the man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Paul said it this way, whom through we worship God. We're worshiping the Father. The way we're worshiping the Father is through the Word that was made flesh in Jesus. But that's Christ, the Logos of God. Right. Right. Right? Yeah. And this is just because why much of Christianity has become void of any power. Because they're, they're busy worshiping Jesus the man. Instead of worshiping the truth that was made flesh in that man. Right? And as I behold that truth and believe that truth, I'm worshiping God. And wouldn't we be, wouldn't 